were bringing their dogs up there to fight and doing unethical things and that. Then it became people this. wait. People were bringing them to the park. Them, yeah, that's why I was banned from the Laurel Canyon Dog Park. What was the story behind? He was that bringing one? his Great Dane up there to fight other dogs, and I never caught him. And then somebody called me and said, "How far are you?" I said, "I'm on Laurel Canyon." He said, "He's here." And his dog attacked a. I don't remember if it was a Labrador Retriever or a Golden Retriever puppy, about five months old. And he just sat there with his arms crossed. Big, tall guy, looked like Howard Stern, tatted yeah. up from head to toe, no judgments, just a bad dude. Sure. Um, and he just sat there, and he was laughing. And this dog was just getting mauled, and nobody wanted to jump in with the Great Dane. So um, the first thing I did was I took care of the Great Dane yeah. um, and and was able to manipulate him off and handed it to another park patron who, who leashed him up. And then I went over to talk to the guy and the woman who was crying and emotionally invested in her dog went to um speak to him and you know this, and he took his leash and he strapped her right across the face and when i knocked him out i didn't mean to hurt him what happened <laughs> is he fell on his jaw i didn't break his jaw right. fell on the jaw all right kyle this has been a long time coming it has. <laughs> we've known each other for 20 some, I'd have to look back, but yeah. Right, something, something like close. that. Um, the re, I, I've wanted to have you on the podcast for a long time. I know you, you don't really like to go out and do a lot of social stuff, so I appreciate you doing it. But um, I, I have talked so much here about dangerous dogs, and that's something that you, your middle name is Dangerous Dogs, right? I mean, I don't know anybody who I respect as much with those dogs as you. And what you've done over the years and stuff is really spectacular so what i want to focus on talking um, about today is really who what are these dogs why are these dogs what they are and why is this such a catastrophic issue that we're facing in society today and why wasn't it 25 30 years ago right where did this what is the culmination of this what is the genesis of all this and 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 why aren't we allowing uh, mandating licenses if we have to carry a gun to have these dogs. That's right. Did the political side of it. Yeah, for sure. We can get into all that because I think that's a huge problem for us is that there are dogs out there, like what we call them, the man stoppers. Um, and people have them, right? They're buying them, they're breeding them, they're selling them, and they're causing a lot of damage. It kind of the Corsos in Thousand Oaks, the, the ones, the, the pits in Florida. Uh, two Argentinian dogos dismembered a woman in Mojave Desert last week. She was jogging. He's not being charged with um, with uh, involuntary manslaughter. I didn't hear about that one. And then the breeder in San Francisco who left his wife alone with his two unneutered male corsos and the female in heat also dismembered. So just just to let you know that I'm a statistics guy, um, Connie corsos are responsible for more human deaths in the United States than all other breeds combined in 2021. Wow. It's a scary thought, thing, uh, being that they've only been here since 1977. Wow. Insane. It's disgusting. But w so, so the Corso is, it's a Mastiff breed. Yeah, it's a Molosser breed. It's a Molosser. And that's something that you, you and I've dealt a lot with a shelter. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pointy eared guy. So I look more, I like those dogs. You like the, the Molossers. You're, 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 that's your specialty. Um, let's talk about the genesis of these dogs. They were bred to be sentry dogs. Right, There's they were, no they were created. created. They weren't even bred. Yeah, yeah, they were created. <laughs> Dogs like this don't exist in nature. Right, and I think that's fascinating because because of this, this is where we have a problem, right? Because it was bred into them, designed into them, and now we've got these dogs that are causing a lot of damage. It's ingrained in their DNA, and it doesn't mean you can't get a course tomorrow. That's the perfect dog, right? But it, but but we have to look at percentages. We have to generalize. People don't like that we generalize as dog trainers, but we have to. Bull yeah. terriers are nutty. But there's Great. bull terriers that live with children yeah. and, and small animals. Yeah. But what's your recipe on that one? Like I always tell people a dominant dog that's high in drive is not a good dog to have around kids. I don't believe there's such a thing as dominant dogs. I think there's such a thing as weak owners. Okay. Um, <laughs> what I do believe in is if the dog is wired wrong, mm -hmm. um, because I truly believe if you have a strong will, you can, you can, you can assert yourself over any dog, but um, we have advantages. We're, we're both 6'1", mm -hmm. so these dogs need to be in, in specific homes. As a rescuer, of course, I vet my adopters to death to the point where they don't even want the dog because I've turned them away, and those are the people that I want. Mm -hmm. um, yes, general, going back to generalizing, some dogs are more dominant in nature than others, but with a strong will, 
you can call and curb that dominance, but it has to be, they can't be your first dog. You can't be a first time mal owner or mm-hmm. these are not dogs as an adopter that I, and you as a trainer recommend as first time dog owners, you'd mm-hmm. probably recommend just your basic Alsatian, like you're yep. a basic shepherd yeah. and then graduate over to a mal. Sure. Um, strong-willed dogs need strong-willed owners let's talk about that because i think I, I couldn't agree with you more and i mean i do think i think there are dominant dogs that i think just like people like you and i are very dominant people um i think we can handle a dominant dog because they we out dominate that and th- th- this is a theory and i don't know how many times you're faced with it i mean i'm really in the media a lot so i get a lot of crap from people who are always talking about there's no dominance in nature and with with wild animals there you know you don't need to be dominant with your dogs and i fight this tooth and nail that if we do not do this we will kill those dogs dogs are pack animals by nature and they're carnivores you Mm -hmm. put those two things together you get a very primal animal anybody who believes in the theory that there aren't aggressive dogs or or there's a food chain right okay (laughs) the bottom of the food chain is plants Mm -hmm. and the top of the food chain is what the lion I would say so. Or the shark, apex yeah. predator. Mm-hmm. Um, and then within those parameters between plant lies all these other dogs. Mm-hmm. There's so many great breeds on either end of the spectrum, but unfortunately with um, genetically modifying these dogs and then line breeding and inbreeding, if people don't even know what that is, but mm-hmm. back to the grandmother, to the grandfather, to the son, and then keeping the line small. <laughs> like the it's like the amish or the appalachians they all look weird mm-hmm. that's how these dogs get this musculature mm-hmm. you don't see dogs in nature with this type of drive with this type of musculature mm-hmm. um they've been line bred the gene pools are small um you need to know what you have and you need to know what you're handling i always say that guns don't kill people people, people kill people, kill people. Mm-hmm. cars don't kill people drunk drivers do and yep. dogs don't kill people but their owners who allow them to do mm-hmm. um I was, I wanted to, when you invited me to do this, I was thinking of some analogies um, that I could use that involve humans. Okay. So that the average lay person who owns a dog can can correlate it and, and make sense of it. I think about two people when I think about dogs. I think about Paul Walker, the actor who died. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to die, but he was in a car that was beyond his means and they were only just pulling away when it spun out of control. Catching on fire is not his fault, it was the manufacturer's fault. But I just remember when I had my, my, uh, I'm a furniture maker by trade. Yeah. When I had my factory on La Brea, I had my kennels in the back. And down the street from me was a body shop, and uh, he, he used to work on my cars. And the owner, his name was Alfred, and he, he had a contract with, uh, who's that actor from Raising Arizona? The big tall guy. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage collects Lamborghinis. He has a Diablo in every color. Wow. Alfred called me and said, hey, one of the valets dinged his bumper. He dropped his car off. Can I come by? You always said you wanted to drive one. He came by my shop. I'm a car collector. No big deal. In my parking lot of my shop, which is small, it's like a 10,000 square foot parking lot. I got in, I let the clutch out and I spun it out. That's all I need to do is wreck some celebrity's car. He says, get out. Right. You know, so he took me for a drive. The car was way beyond my means. This is the point I'm trying to make. It was beyond my means. Certain dogs are beyond certain dogs. Now I've driven stick shift cars. I had a 65 Porsche. I had a 67 vet. These are antiquated classes. They have no power. Mm -hmm. This is a whole different animal. Sure. Um, and that's what happens. People get these dogs and they get in, into trouble. The other, the other th- person that comes to mind is Mike Tyson. Uh-huh. Mike Tyson beat his opponents before they ever fought. He beat him in the press conference and he beat him in the ring and he beat him in the stare down. What mm-hmm. happened to Mike Tyson the first time he got beat? He had a lackluster career mm-hmm. up and down, few wins, a few losses. And at the end of the day with these dogs, you have to bully the bully. Mm-hmm. What happened with Buster Douglas is Mike Tyson got bullied mm-hmm. and, uh, and I think you and I were talking the other day. We've talked about this several times. Yeah. We were talking about positive reinforcement trainers. Mm-hmm. The opposite of positive reinforcement is negative enforcement. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, people say, well, Kyle's a heavy-handed trainer. You don't want your dog with him. Who names a rescue called Smash Face? Smash Face is a play on Brock of dogs. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with the way I treat my animals. <laughs> right. So you have to bully the bully. And, yeah. and when we talk about a positive reinforcement, mm-hmm. that's when we want our dog to do something right a negative reinforcement is when we're trying to stop a specific behavior and people automatically correlate that with hitting and punishment. kicking punching punishment mm-hmm. uh shot color a negative enforcement correction could be as much as standing your dog down yep. it could be staring them down it could be putting them in in their place on their mat i know you're 
your strict obedience, so your, yours mm-hmm. would be placed. Yep. Mine is just out. I just out them from the current situation. Right. And when I see the body language change, I let them re-engage in the play groups. Um, but I just wanted to, because we talk about this all the time, negative enforcement training is in no way whatsoever abusive. No. The abuse that happens with trainers happens at the end of the leash. It's not the prong collar. It's the person the, at yeah. the end of the leash. And it's not the remote for an e-collar no. where you have continuous impulse. It's right. the guy doing continuous and putting burn marks in your right. dog's neck. Yeah. None of these things help with aggression. They Nothing. exacerbate it. See, I always talk about that. And, you know, I've been notorious if you watch my videos. I have taken more prong collars and e-collars off of dogs when they have aggression and just put them on a slip lead. Right? I mean, you can do what everything These things I do don't is, exist in the nature. Right. How is it that wolves, coyotes, dingoes, and lions are able to walk in packs? Mm-hmm. And how is it in downtown LA you have a pack of mixes, mostly pit pit mm-hmm. mixes. They find a can that a homeless person threw out with some dog food, and they're all sharing it. And why aren't they scrapping? Yeah, they're not. They're not genetically modified dogs. Mm-hmm. They're eating out of out of necessity. Um, they don't have the power of these breeds that we're going to get into mm-hmm. that are just. The breeds we're going to focus in on are breeds that are bred for a purpose, and when they're not being used for that purpose, their anger and mm-hmm. their and their energy comes out in a different way, yep. and not a good way. Yeah, I call it leaking. <laughs> totally right. Yeah, it's and that's the, their le- think, their bad qualities qualities leak out. Yeah, like if you see a dog, even a dog before a trial or before a bite, like police dogs, they're they're mm, 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 mm. and if that doesn't go somewhere. It's going to turn around and bite you. That's the predecessor to the bite. Right. I always yeah. tell people, your barking dog, it's either a nuisance barker because it's a pain in the butt because right. it's a Yorkie or it's a predecessor to a bite. Yeah. You have yeah. to look at the type of bark it is. Is it guttural? Right. Or is it from the mouth? Mm-hmm. It's from the mouth. Dog's Who excited. Cares? Yeah. When you get it down here, you need to be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and these are the slight nuances that we need to be able to teach people that own these dogs. And I was in my yard today. I was running a play group and I just look and I see things and my whole philosophy, my whole life of what i've done 31 years now is based on preemptive training i want to stop the action before it starts i look for the most subtle nuances whether it's the eyes mm-hmm. shoulders stiffness hack the slightest thing things be, and my friends were like sure, i didn't see anything i said I, you did yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, I, want, I want to talk about that because before we even get into the breeds you and i are real similar in that whole preemptive thing you know, I said once I'm a dog Nazi and somebody gave me crap because they didn't get the soup Nazi joke, right? They didn't understand that part. Um, but my thing is, and when I, and you run playgroups at your house, I ran them at the shelter. Um, I'm looking for just the ever so slightest. And my thing is, if I can stop that, I stop the fight. There's a theory among motivational, positive only, you know, R plus, whatever trainers they want to call themselves, where they're saying, if you stop that, you're cutting out the warning signal it's going to go straight to a bite and as a guy oh my god no you're you're, you're carving a new neural pathway you're in the brain the more you stop it the more the brain says and then eventually you you no longer need you can run that play group and be in your kitchen cooking right right that's 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 that's, what we're doing is based in science right so when you want to change a bad habit Mm -hmm. you carve a new neural what we do for dogs is the same thing psychiatrists and therapists do for humans me somebody who's been in therapy my whole life for anxiety and anger issues I just transcended everything I've learned and I take it on. I do dog psychology. I'm not really a dog yep. trainer. Yeah. So I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. Me too. I, I wholeheartedly. Yeah, me too. I'm um, so glad we're talking about preemptive that. Preemptive training is everything. The other thing is, is once the action starts, whether it be um, a guttural growl, a posture, mm-hmm. T-boning another dog, mm-hmm. um, and then you go to give the correction, you've already got a bit of an adrenaline dump. Uh, a lot of people red zone i don't like that term yeah. there's an adrenaline dump there's lots of chemicals pain receptors get pulled back mm-hmm. and then the dog's ready for battle so mm-hmm. you got these drunk guys at the bar they don't say a word but as soon as the bouncer puts their hand around their neck they're about it they want to go mm-hmm. so we want to we want to we want to stop that before it happens yeah. and when you do that when you correct a dog that hasn't where the behavior hasn't started yet the the, the correction is ever so slight but one you know, we've we've yeah. been in a lot of dog fight yeah once it starts you're fighting against nature yep. we don't want to fight against nature yeah want to stop it the other thing is if you can stop it before it happens you you build the bite the dog's bite inhibition yep every time a dog sh- strikes a dog or a human the, the bite inhibition lowers right. somebody called me yesterday i'm taking their frenchie over thanksgiving weekend what started as my wife got bit turned into a text message turned into a phone call that she got bit twice he got bit in the hand it bit the previous owner and it bit <laughs> someone at the shelter the story always comes out right. this, this dog has no bite inhibition none and it's a frenchie they're hard to train okay i've heard that Frenchies 
are problematic. I've had many problems. With Health that. and behavioral, they're not deadly. But the right. behavior is the same. We have to treat it the same. Yep. The difference is the, the danger isn't there. Okay, so let's talk about So I, one thing I always tell people, I say, you know, people say, well, you even a chihuahua bites. And I said, I'd much rather get hit by a bicycle coming down the street than a truck, right? <laughs> That's a simple logic. So I believe that any dog is going, they're all the same DNA, right? They're all essentially wolves, right? So we need to find the behavior, find the warning signs and squash that, right? Just get it out. It's not acceptable. It's never going to happen with you and me. The behavior is bad, mm -hmm. but the potential is what the difference is. Right. These cute videos on YouTube, on on TikTok of the chihuahua, mm -hmm. it's a bad behavior. Horrible. And they allow it because because the danger and the tenacity is, no, I'm sorry, the tenacity is there, but the, the danger isn't. But so everybody thinks it's cute. So mm -hmm. they're they're clipping the nail, right. showing the teeth. It's, it's bad behavior. So glad you're saying we that. We tolerate it yeah. because the people think it's, it's not funny. It's not funny. Because a chihuahua it. can yeah. lay a bite down on a child's lip. I'm, I'm not worried about the physical scars, mm -hmm. the emotional, emotional scars, scars later yeah. on. And ch listen, chihuahuas, half teeth will bite. It's a little <laughs> right. moniker of mine. Right. <laughs> right. So it's true. So, so when we talk about, again, so I think, like I said, any dog can bite. <clears throat> Your real specialty is the smash face dog, the break is phallic dog, the, the mollusker. Tell me about the dogs you've got at your house now. I, I was an all breed. <laughs> yeah. I just had to take a breath yeah. because I want to cry. Uh, I started off as an all breed Mastiff rescue. Uh, I did not intend to have a rescue. What happened was I developed a reputation in the early nineties when I had my furniture stores of, I want to use the right terminology, not a thug, but a guy who walked around dog parks and gave free advice unsolicited and was the first <laughs> guy to jump into a dog fight. Right. And unfortunately I've had to take out a couple of people. Uh -huh. Um, who were bringing their dogs up there to fight and doing unethical things and that then it became people this. wait people were bringing them to the park them, yeah that's why i was banned from the laurel canyon dog park for breaking someone's jaw thankfully i held insurance my insurance was able to pay for i it. remember the story about the broken jaw and yeah. the guy but yeah. what was what was the story behind he was that bringing one? his great dane up there to fight other dogs and i never caught him and then somebody called me and said how far are you i said i'm on laurel canyon he said he's here and his dog attacked a i don't remember if it was a labrador retriever or a golden retriever puppy about five months old and he just sat there with his arms crossed big tall guy looked like howard stern tatted yeah. up from head to toe no judgments just a bad dude sure um and he just sat there and he was laughing and this dog was just getting mauled and nobody wanted to jump in with the great dane so um the first thing i did was i took care of the great dane yeah. um and and was able to manipulate him off and handed it to another park patron who who leashed him up and then i went over to talk to the guy and the woman who was crying and emotionally invested in her dog went to um speak to him and you know this, you've been here multiple times we've asked you not to bring your dog it's unaltered why why do you find pleasure in it? and he took his leash and he strapped her right across the face and when i knocked him out i didn't mean to hurt him what happened <laughs> is he fell on his jaw i didn't break his jaw right. fell on the jaw and i had insurance it was a seventy six thousand dollar payout and then when i was contracted to do the show for discovery channel everything was great we were four episodes in and they found this payout Mm. when they did my criminal background check and unfortunately i had to uh, reveal what it was for you think that they would want me yeah for the show as an activist but instead they thought it was a liability wow um uh, i did some security up at the dog park and i started helping people with their aggressive dogs and i was the first one to jump in and break up a dog fight mm -hmm. after my manufacturing days i went into furniture retail and i built um, kennels behind all my retail stores some were on Beverly Boulevard over in the furniture district and some were on Ventura Boulevard. And there was no internet and just people started sussing me out and walking into my store and going, oh, I'm, I'm in the wrong place. Um, I said, what are you looking for? They said, we're looking for Kyle, that's me. Oh, I, and they'd have a dog in the car. Uh -huh. I remember one boxer, she said, uh, this uh, woman, uh, Jerry, white girl, she dates exclusively black men. She says she can't date because her dog doesn't like, can I fix it? And the I dog said, doesn't like black eyes. Doesn't like black eyes. Okay, right, right. whatever. Dogs see in black and white. It right. is what it is. It's sure. not a racial thing. And not, yeah. the darker the blacker person, the mo mm -hmm. most of what the dog sees is the white of the eye. Yep. The guy wears sunglasses and a hat, sets it off even more. So I said, "Where's your dog? What is it?" She says, "The boxer. Her name is Maya. She's in the car. What do you drive? Convertible Mustang." I said, "Take me to your dog." She says, "No, no, no, no." I said, "Take me to your dog." And um, <laughs> I don't know how the dog didn't break the window. She had the window cracked about three inches, and the dog was on the window trying to get at me and stuff. I said, you need to get away from your car because part of this is just resource guarding, and some of it is barrier aggression. Mm -hmm. um, 
I saw the dog had a leash on. With my right hand, I opened the door, and with my left hand, I pulled the dog out. But I pulled it with such force that that her her chin shoulder area met my knee. Okay. Done. Done. <laughs> done. You got to bully the bully. Yep. It was done. done. She, the woman just started crying. She says, this is amazing. So she continued to date, and I took the dog whenever she had a date or when she would go out of town right. and the dog fully respected me and never did anything and then eventually she met somebody who she was serious about and she wanted to acclimate the dog and i said well if he doesn't take a backward step and he doesn't have a hat or sunglasses on everything should be fine right we went for a walk i handed him the leash behind the dog's back i slowly stepped away next thing you know he's walking the dog as soon as i'm out of the picture i told him to bend down and pet her and i don't know if they're still together this day i'm sure the dog is passed oh, wow. um there's no dog that's too much for me to handle and if if I have to believe in that moniker until I'm until I'm at an age where I'm still able bodied, I'm going to do this as long as I can. But as long as I believe that, and as long as Tyson believed that, and as long as these UFC fighters believe that, they're, they're thing. The second they have any doubt, and by the way, if you have doubt, you know a dog will pick up on mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. They'll capitalize yeah. on anything. Smell. I want to talk about that because you always said that there's no dog, and I I have no fear of dogs, but I have immense respect. I, I have apprehension. I'm not going to say I have fear because if I have fear, they're going right. to smell it for sure. There are pheromones and hormones are things you and I can't smell. And we can't control. But I'm not going to tell you that I don't go in sometimes a bit apprehensive. Mm-hmm. I get nervous. There's a video of me. You probably won't pick up on it uh, for, for a show I did on um, on court TV where I'm entering the house. And you can see me take. Mm-hmm. I had to calm myself because I knew Was the dog's the bite history. It was a little pit. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it ran up onto their beautiful white goose down comforter when I walked it down and it peed on their bed. I ended up taking the dog on a leash. I took it for a walk around their neighborhood in Los Feliz and the film crew, I told them not to come with me because I didn't want anything graphic on film, but I came back with the dog on my shoulder licking me in the face (laughs) and um, they just need to be put in their place. So talk about that apprehension because I think that's an important thing. Like I have immense respect for dogs, but we also know that a dog only has one tool and that's their mouth, right? And I've seen you work very dangerous dogs and it's highly impressive. I mean, to me, it's, it's extremely impressive the way you do it. You're not heavy handed. You don't beat up dogs. You don't choke dogs. You don't alpha roll dogs. No. I've never seen you do anything. You don't need to like alpha that. roll a dog. The right. mouth, you're talking about the mouth. Mm-hmm. The mouth is the most important thing. When we want to lower the bite, every dog that comes to my house gets the roof of their mouth massaged, their gums massaged. I pull on their canines. Mm-hmm. I hold their mouth shut. I hold their mouth open. I don't pill my dogs with American cheese. I put it down their throat. Mm-hmm. And if I'm comfortable enough and the mouth is not too wet or my hands are dry, if I have a paper towel, I'll even pull on their tongue a little bit. Mm-hmm. You want to desensitize the mouth. Well. I do that with every dog. <laughs> Janet's back. I think we have an intruder. <laughs> I do that with every dog that comes in. Yeah. Um, the more we work around the mouth and the face, mm-hmm. the more we desensitize the mouth and the right. more we build bite inhibition. Bite inhibition for people that don't know what it is yeah. is the dog's. Maya! Maya! Hey, 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 hey! Why? The, the dog's uh, bite inhibition is the dog's ability, not physically, physiologically, mm-hmm. meaning physically and mentally to hold back on the pressure of the bite dogs that mouth when they're young when they mouth too hard people don't know this when they're puppy you need to say ouch ouch you need to fake cry you need to pull your hand away you know what you the best thing to do when they're mouthing your hands when they're puppies make a fist mm-hmm. or give them their, give them something they can't get their mouth around yep. build their bite inhibition so when they're two years old and they become who they are and they start feeling their oats the mouth has been desensitized mm-hmm. to um to humans um if you don't teach that at a young age and you buy a Corso and throw him in your backyard and think he's going to be a lab two years later, he's not. not. Yeah. How much of that do you think bite inhibition, my theory is always it's learned so early on from the mother biting on the nipples, the mother pushing him away, playing with the other puppies, the other puppy screaming, running away, whatever. And the dog learns, okay, this is not a behavior that's bringing me any benefit. Um, and I, I, you know, I need to change it. Science says, and Peter J. Vollmer, one of my favorite and one of the very few people in the United States that actually holds a degree in animal behavioral science, which is really hard to get, oh. um, has a book. And in the back, he talks about breeders and how important it is at the three week mark to pick these puppies up, talk to them, touch them, touch their eyes, their ears, their anus, their genitals, all the sensitive areas, their groin, put them on their back and do the stuff. And those breeders, um, a lot of the bite inhibition starts there. Mm-hmm. It's not the breeders in Van Nuys where I live in the mm-hmm. backyard where the dogs are sitting in fecal matter and urine. And then the day somebody's interested on Craigslist, they get bathed with a little spritz of cologne. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh my God, it's so cute. And the dog's mm-hmm. completely fucked up. Right. Sorry. But um, there's that. Yep. And then and then there's 
you know, the legal age to sell or adopt a dog from an agency is eight weeks old. Right. I think dogs need to stay with their mother to, in, into the 12, 13, 14. Oh, well, you do believe that. I, okay. I really do. Okay. I really do okay. because they, the dog, the puppies really don't start playing and wrestling and grabbing the necks and, 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 and giving each other signals mm-hmm. at eight weeks old. They're mush. Hmm. I mean, I think I don't. What, I mean, pugs, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I'm talking about the breeds that we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I think the law. I think it one more month hmm. before prior to adoption. And and by the way, when they're when they're eight weeks old, it's it's pretty hard to. Um, okay. Yeah, it's pretty hard. But at twelve weeks, you kind of know they're doing. You can see who's got what and where that dog is going. Mm-hmm. Um, critical rearing. It's the same thing as children. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And let's get into that structure idea because that's the one thing that. When we talk about these dogs, like like I've got this theory, I've seen people take dogs at a really early age, like at six weeks, but they're trainers that are really trying to condition and bond stuff. My thing, I still go with the eight to nine week thing. I think that's a really good pocket, but you have to know how to control that dog and one, not beat up on that dog and two, not let him get away with stuff. When I got goofy at eight, nine weeks, I'm sorry, nine weeks. He was horribly food aggressive. I mean, he was just right, right, yeah. But that's a genetic thing, right? I'm I'm going after the, all the other puppies now. I'm going to part of his you. DNA. Maybe his other litter mate wasn't exactly. So so I mean, obviously, the, the, you don't beat the dog up for that. You know, you hand feed. You, you work through hand, hand feeding, like like you know, touching his mouth, holding bones while he was eating raw marrow bones, um, fixed. But when we get into these, I hate to say it, but these unsuspecting owners of these breeds, like like the presses, the county corsos, the massives. They're not um, unsuspecting. They're right. entitled and they're, it's a trend and it's a status thing. Okay. I think you're being kind. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of it is, I mean, a lot of it is ego, right? I think a huge portion of it is ego. Like I want the biggest tough dog because I'm a real tough, but you're not tough, right? I mean, tough is walking around with a little mini dachshund, a little chihuahua. You're cool, you're tough. Like we could be cool with any dog. I don't need a big dog, but... You like big dogs. I like big dogs. We can carry ourselves. I think these people that I see, and I'm not casting aspersions, but these thuggy kind of looking guys, you know, with their pit bull on a chain, I've got a huge problem with it, right? I've got a huge problem with it. I have a problem with the hyperdoodles running around Whole Foods. I, oh, I have worse problems. These yeah, dogs are a mess. Yeah, a disaster. Right? Untrainable. Totally, yeah. I mean, the Labradors, and everybody's got a fake service dog. Untrainable. Go to My Gold's dad lives gym. in Newport, a little, yep. little higher end yep. than what you are here. It's, it's, it's Doodleville when I go down there. And every restaurant I go to, I'm a dog, I, I want a pet. I can't. Yeah. They're either nippy, bitey, they're on a <laughs> Bronco, or they're so hyper, or they're scared. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, I think it's a disaster. But um, dogs, we, we all want, we want our mate, our significant other, our furniture, our cars, and our dogs to be based on what we like mm-hmm. aesthetically. But, but a beautiful woman is not dangerous, nor is a beautiful piece of furniture like we're sitting at. Mm-hmm. With the dogs, it is. Mm-hmm. And and they're not toys. This isn't a game. Mm-hmm. And anybody watching this podcast that wants to look up statistics by death by dog in the United States, it's more than any other country. It's mainly Corsos. Mm-hmm. I love the breed. You'll hear me bash them all day long, but I don't, I'm going to tell the truth. I do the same with my own ones. I know. And then people think <laughs> we don't like them. Well, you right. own one, but you right. bash them. Yeah. No, we're realists, and that's yeah. all we are. Um I preach this all the time. If you want to know about a specific breed, the worst thing you can do is talk to the breeder mm-hmm. because the breeder is like your resume for work. And it's like your dating profile on Tinder. Yep. You're going to put your best foot forward. Right. If you want to know about a breed, you talk to a breed specific rescue because we're going to tell you everything the breeder didn't do. But then people say, yeah, but I want to go to a breeder. And I say, where do you think I got my dogs from? Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. They all, they all eventually, came to from a breeder it's better to get a two-year-old dog from me that i know everything about than an eight-week-old dog from them that at two years old you don't know what you're getting into unless it's you at two that can handle mm-hmm. it and curb it and cull it's those behaviors yep. and we talked about this upstairs before we got on film each every individual dog and every individual human only has so much capacity mm-hmm. i don't know how many were in goofy's litter mm-hmm. but i can tell you they're not all on his level mm-hmm. and i can tell you that some have no food aggression mm-hmm. i can tell you one is probably a couch potato mm-hmm. i can tell you one is probably aggressive right your yeah. brothers and sisters? Yeah. Are, you're all different? Yeah. All different. Like everybody. And, that, and that's the thing, you know, I've had so many chats with breeders on the show, people especially breed, not breeders. Um, but you don't know. Like they say, oh, you know, we, we want the lion from this and the father, we want to watch this one. But they'll watch and they'll see, okay, this dog has had 10 litters and this is what we see. But in the 11th litter, you could you could end up with a dog that's com- completely different, right? You, you'd never know what you're going to get. It's just like if you, you know, like if, if two great athletes marry and have a baby, 
no chance that the, the child's going to be a perfect athlete, right? He could be a nerd. But people always think that that's... The There's no good go. and bad breeders. There's ethical and unethical breeders. I agree. That's and then, great. And then you can have a backyard breeder breeding corsos, mm -hmm. and you can have a litter of eight, and six are amazing, and you can have a triple purple ribbon, $10,500 corso import, and eight of those dogs would be horrible. Right. You just don't know. Yeah. Dogs are individuals. People are individuals. But at the end of the day, for this conversation that you and I are having... We have to generalize. And mm -hmm. because you deal with so many males, I've only dealt with one male. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get her adopted. I'm sorry, it wasn't me. It was my ex-girlfriend who pulled the dog. Mm -hmm. She couldn't get her adopted because she couldn't show her mm -hmm. because she was so reactive to other dogs. Mm -hmm. And she called me. She says, would you show her for the next meet and greet? They have a nice uh, silver shepherd, you know, those silver ones, uh -huh. male, neutered. I said, yeah. I said, how have you been showing her? She says, on a leash. I said, what does she do? She goes, she goes for the neck. So uh, she lived on a residential street that had very little traffic because it was a uh, cul-de-sac. And I, I told them, the adopters, when they got to the house, I wanted them to park across the street. Now, this is Kim. I think you knew her. Uh -huh. uh, I said, I want you to park across the street. Don't, 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 don't knock on the door. I don't want to set off a barking right. frenzy. Uh, just text me when you're outside and then come outside by your car with your dog. And then I took, what was her name? I can't remember her name. She was a beautiful Mal. And I took her and I got to the front door of our house and I just let her off the leash and she made a beeline across the street to the to the other shepherd and they started playing mm -hmm. you know why no restrictions we don't yeah there's no restrictions right. <laughs> people ask me what causes leash aggression i don't know i don't yeah. know the science behind it i know how to fix it leashes i have no idea all i know is in the wild we don't no have leashes. bark collars yeah we don't have leashes we don't have barriers we don't have plexiglass we don't have chain link fences mm -hmm. we don't these things don't exist in the wild so we don't get these issues it was i was i I'm embarrassed to say, but I spend a lot of my time on TikTok. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I haven't turned my TV on in about six months. Right. But so you, don't, you don't have a TikTok account. I don't have a TikTok account. I'm anonymous on TikTok. Maybe I should be a TikToker. I could do makeup tutorials. Yeah, we could do them together, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'll do hair. I was on TikTok this morning. I saw a great video. It was a German Shepherd and a, a Golden Retriever. And it was a veterinary clinic that had a huge sliding glass door. These dogs <laughs> wanted to kill each other and then the vet tech opened the, the door. sliding glass door and they played right as soon as he closed it they went back yeah. these things don't exist in nature and yeah. what we've done to these dogs i'm big I'm, I'm big on walking my dogs off leash mm -hmm. and i know it's against the law but the leash is 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 it's such a I, I, it, there's too much traffic we live in the city yeah i, I follow the laws but the leash is the cause of so many issues i wish i knew the yeah. science behind it i mean i just think it's the it's the frustration it's the, it's all that energy that travels down that leash we're not allowing them to meet the naturally the way they would where they run up on each other they snip yo you're a male oh you're a female oh we're we're good yeah 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 i agree with you i mean i i've seen it at you know again at the shelter i mean i respect what you do with your dogs and so many times you know just letting them sniff i used to do a stacked introduction i used to force them because people have on leash, I would force. This is your nose. This is that dog's butt. Sniff. Flooding. Fl I, I love flooding. Flooding right? is my. I, I live by flooding. Yeah. I take dogs from the shelter with kennel cough, freshly neutered, I, and I flood them. I put them right into a play group. I don't mm -hmm. wait. These rescues. Oh, we're going to let them give them time to. You give them time to decompress and get comfortable and heal, yeah. and then you introduce them to your pack. No, <laughs> hit them when they're down. Okay, I want to talk about something. What you just said. He's, that's that's goofy. That's the boy. He's uh, no. You can yeah. You can see him under your under your. Uh, there he is. <laughs> he's almost he's almost 13 he's gonna be 13 in march and he shoots him what three no he shoots in one in in protection uh shoots in two in obedience and three in mondio ring obedience okay so and, he, and did his face get on camera a little bit yeah okay so in the hallway we talked about mm -hmm. protection dogs versus guardian dog this right. dog could rip my head off if you gave him a command right now in german right yeah nope I, it, i'd be hard pressed to fight him off yeah I mean, that, you're a big guy but yeah that's a protection dog right People say they have a guard dog. We talked about that. A guard mm. dog is a dog left unattended in your yard, usually unaltered, usually yep. a male, female, whatever. Right. Um, and then people think that it's it's not. You're not going to be able to out that dog mm -hmm. on command like this dog. Yeah. This dog isn't going to go after anything that's not a threat. No. Those dogs do. They have no discernment. Yeah. And then we start getting into these breeds, these presses, corsos, <laughs> knees. Yep. People see the wrinkles. Yep. My new boy, everybody's tripping out on the wrinkles. Do you know what's under those wrinkles? A shredded, ripped. Right. Well, because the co corsos, right? The kind of corsos. The, well, the neos, the, the wrinkles are there to protect the dog from from back Fighting. in the day when they were in the. You know what a gladiator dog is? 
These dogs used mm-hmm. to be in the ring. I was telling my girlfriend the other day, these dogs were bred to fight off God. Now, if these guys didn't have a shield and think they'd be dead. Yep. And second, this is how the court gesture and the kings and got off. And this was in uh, ancient Rome. This is in Italy. Yeah. Spain. Uh, long before bullfighting ever existed. Mm. These dogs were going up. And this was your punishment. Also, also you go up against these dogs. These are molossers. And there's still a lot of theories out there about where molosser breeds come from. Did yeah. they really come from wolves like the shepherd? That, or did they come from bears like like some of the... Oh, I didn't. I never heard of that. Yeah. So a lot a of the DNA. That... Yeah. And that's why bears get parvo. I've never heard yeah, this. There's just... so many weird... Because look, because look at all the dogs in nature, hyenas, dingoes, yep. Shiba Inus, yeah, um, coyotes, yep. and wolves, right, and all the similarities. And then right. look at the molossers. Yeah, I see. Did, I never knew that. Yeah, where did they come from? So I, I, I used to belong to molosserworld.com, which was a paid. Now it's free, and just it'll it won't be we won't figure it out while you and I are on this earth, mm-hmm. but eventually they're going to find out where these molossers came from because because nature just didn't intend anything to have yeah. this type of power. Um, Connie Corso has this 765 to 780 pound bite force per square inch, per square inch meaning from the mandibular uh, fulcrum point mm-hmm. to the nose. Frenchies have a strong bite too, but the nose is so short, short. they can't generate the power. Mm. 790? That's insane. Bone crushing power. Bone crushing. With yeah. a natural aversion to strangers, mm. sketchy at night. Well, all dogs have all bad dogs vision at night. Sketchy, yeah. But but then you 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 harness the potential with the tenacity, yeah, with the lack of training, with with unqualified owners that are either in over their head financially or mostly physically. They're buying dogs that are beyond their physical means. Yeah, I, and emotional means. I, I was some labs are beyond people's physical means, well, not because sure. they're aggression, but because of the energy level. Yep. Jack Russell's. Every breed has its own specific. Every human. I'm not a racist. I'm a racialist. Yeah, uh, and and I, I I bag on my own culture as much. Yeah. As we, I come from a very self-deprecating <laughs> culture. I'm right. Jewish, but <laughs> the thing is, is that is that every breed, just like every human, has a trait. And mm-hmm. with a Jack Russell, if you're not going to the dog park, if you're not hiking, doing trails, and you don't have another dog or two to play with, you're going to lose the bottom of the feet of your furniture. You're going to lose your sneakers. Um, I used to say this when I was doing the play groups. I used to, I used to be very, very, very reluctant to put shepherds with mollusers, and people go, "Why?" And I said, "Because they dance different, different energy, right?" Like if I take somebody from a, um, from let's say, not, I'm not going to say <laughs> black or white. I'm going to say an African, somebody from Rwanda, right, which I've visited Rwanda, a no, real right, African, right? A, a real African, a real Rwandan, because Africa is a continent. So we're going to talk about right, the, the country, right? Talk about the country, R- Rwanda, and I'm going to pair them up with somebody from Sweden. Right. And I'm going to say, go dance. Is that even fair? Right. But that's what people don't get with dogs. Right. We've genetically bred them, manufactured them to be something that's very different than it started out with. And now we're going to introduce them together. And I had a huge issue with people who would say, just put them together. I didn't, I knew I could manage it, but I thought it was so unfair because let the mollusks play together because they know. That M- molossers are a wrestling dog, and and the mm-hmm. shepherds and 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 the herding dogs want are run and chase, run and chase, run and chase. Yeah. my dogs don't run and chase; they want to wrestle. Yep, you and get, shepherds hate. Wrestling. And that does, and that doesn't mean that your shepherd and my molosser won't shepherd won't wrestle, right? Because we it's one on one, and it's you and I controlling the For situation. Sure. You talk about different people. I took the t- there was a privilege at my factory. I kept TVs in my in my wood shop for my employees to watch world cup. I had to remove the TVs because I'd come home and it'd be a bloodbath because half my, half my carpenters were Mexican. The other half were Guatemalan <laughs> and the other. So right. instead of making furniture, they're fighting over whose team scored what goal. It, right. It's just craziness. And dogs are the same way. Yeah. Um, like breeds recognize like breeds. If you go to the dog park, pit bulls always pick out the other pit bulls. There's always a Husky chasing another Husky. Mm-hmm. Huskies are a chasing dog. Mm-hmm. And then you've, you, you've got your molossers. They're, they're body slamming. They're, they're throwing their butt and the other they're t-boning each other one's got one on its back sometimes they lay their body weight down it's a different energy um my house is all molossers um and i started out when i got goofy i had a sharpe and i had two sharpes i had one that was a killer and then i had silly and when i got goofy he learned to play with silly so when you watch him he butt checks Right. Yeah. He learned that at eight weeks old. He learned to butt check and body slam from Silly, who is a Sharpe, which is in, you know, which is mom. I love the butt check. It's one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite things to watch. My favorite Cute. thing to watch when I bring a new dog into the program 
And when I know when I know my dog is ready to go is the first time they play bow. Mm, yeah, I love watching that. Once you get the play bow, you're, you're good. Done. You're golden. Yep, I can go right, in and make right. my pasta and I can do my thing. <laughs> right, right. I leave my back window open so I can hear if anything's going on. But once you get that play bow, you know, you know. you're good. Yeah. So when you talk about these dogs and you don't take dogs, they're just a friendly dog, whatever, you're getting the ones that nobody can handle. My rescue is for medical and behavioral mastiffs. Mm-hmm. My dogs all have bite histories, except for my personal dogs. I have a zero bite history with the city and the county. I've been doing this for 31 years. My dogs don't bite. If I have to give sanctuary to a dog that I think feels too dangerous, I do, mm-hmm. um, just so I can keep that record clean. Sure. Um, and I've never done a behavioral euthanasia. I just don't believe in it. Yeah. Um, unless they're wired wrong. I had a dog that was redirecting on itself. Mm-hmm. It had a brain tumor. I let it go. It was a Frenchie that I would, that had uh, removed somebody's digit, picked their pinky off. Mm-hmm. Um, when he started redirecting on himself and uh, research guarding his uh, fecal matter, I knew something was wrong. That's when we took him in for the CAT scan. Of course, I got the owner's permit, even though they gave me sanctuary mm-hmm. to do with what uh, part of the contract was they had to pay for all vetting for end of life. Mm-hmm. And even though the 10 year contract was not up, you got a dog that's redirecting on itself just isn't right in the head. But that, yeah. that I don't consider that a behavioral youth. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I agree. I, I think we can, uh, we have enough tools and we have, that we can keep these dogs going. Um, but how many other people can do that? Like how many other people can take a Corso, a, 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 a Neo or something like that and, and work these dogs? I mean, even bigger than you, you're, I, you're my I, size, you're a big guy. That I know, I don't know. And it's not my size, it's my, it's my will. But what you can't do with these dogs is you can't uh, meet like force with like force. These dogs don't take correction well. They will defend themselves. Mm. Um, I try and verbally correct the dogs as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Use distractions, use sound. If I have to get physically involved, I will. Okay. But I try not to. Because um, you'll get a dog that won't back down. And then you find yourself at the other end of that. Have you ever done that? Have you ever found yourself in that situation? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sherman Oaks Hospital knows me by name. So yeah. <laughs> I'm missing part of my calf. I'm missing part of my heel. Um, you know, my hands have been surgically repaired, as everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I've been there. But um, I try to avoid it as much as possible. Every time a dog strikes, it lowers its bite inhibition. Mm-hmm. Right now, the Frenchie that bit the wife two times, really strange bites. It was when she was walking away in the calf. So he's an opportunistic mm-hmm. biter. So until I meet the dog on the 22nd, I told her that she has to turn around whenever he's behind her. But I asked them if they had carpet or hardwood floors. They said the house was a combination. I said, when she's on the hardwood floors, I want her to stomp her foot down. Mm-hmm. I want her to send her dog reeling backwards. Mm-hmm. And if she walks and the dog follows, I want her to turn around until the dog no longer follows. Mm-hmm. It's a really strange strike. Mm-hmm. The calf, twice, no trigger. So I, mean, I think it's, it's, I've seen it. I've seen it in Shepherds. need to figure it out. You know, I've got, <laughs> you've seen steel toe shoes. I got steel heel. When, wow yeah i walk away from my dogs i want to know yeah i'm yeah. sure you do yeah with your dogs i got one of my <laughs> i got my calf grabbed one time but I, i'm interested to meet this dog because um i'm interested in working with him but then again i'm not interested because i found out that he's on two drugs and i don't train dogs that are on prozac or amitriptyline because mm-hmm. the brain is not at full capacity and drugs don't drugs don't they sedate but they, they don't mask. they don't stop they mask yeah. they don't stop the you can take an antidepressant but you've got to see a therapist yep. meds without therapy does nothing because you got to get to the core of the problem but if the meds yeah. can give you a 20 percent advantage and help alleviate it whether it's a sure. chemical imbalance for me i take anxiety meds mm-hmm. for 30 for 39 years but the real work comes from getting out mm-hmm. talking to you being around dogs being around people and mm-hmm. putting myself in uncomfortable positions that's it's an important thing to think about is how do we address this situation i always think that behavioral is more important than medical they they work hand in hand but if you're not willing to get into the physical with this dog and teach him how to rewire himself through movement stuff oh that's one thing i wanted to talk about a lot of people always talk about i'm not i'm not going to mention names of other trainers um one person is very famous who always says well the dog needs to be tired so that he won't do this and that. And my theory on that was always like, well, if the, you open the door and the dog goes out or he's wherever and he's not tired, you gotta be able to control him. Like I wanna control my dogs in drive. I think I, I think a tired dog is a good dog, but I think it's a piece of the puzzle. It's not everything. Okay. So do you, like wh- how, what's your approach with that? Will you 
before you train the dog, get them tired, or would you just take them right out and just let's go and do this? Again, we're be- dealing be- with aggression, be- Because right? I don't do obedience. Right. Um, well, you do behavior, though. I do behavior, so the only things that are important to me are leash aggression and recall. Okay. Um, my sits and downs and stays, I usually refer out to a friend of mine or mm-hmm. friends or other people, but I want to lay down the groundwork for them to be able to work with the dog first. I think behavior will become before any tricks. I agree. And I have a client's dog in my house right now. She goes, is she giving five or speaking? I said, no, I don't want her to find yeah. her voice. <laughs> Your dog has separation anxiety. That's right. the last thing I want. And the last trainer the dog was with taught her to speak. And I'm like, no, ah. so I have to work all the way against that now. Yeah. Um, because they leave and the dog, you know, they come back, she's panting, she's overheating, her tongue is curled up at the end, which you know is mm-hmm. dangerous. Um, the crate bars are bent. You know, I've got her I've got her now in play groups. So they don't have another dog. Um, but um, tired is one key. That's, that's exercise. But then there's socialization. There's stimulation. Mm-hmm. And then there's, and then there's the most important one, which is boundaries. We yeah. have to set strict boundaries. You know, I have... Uh, everybody's yard has three fences, your back fence, your left and your right. My mm-hmm. dogs don't go near the, my fence. They don't go near the fence line. I don't, what my dogs, when my neighbor's dogs bark, my dogs don't go near the fence line. They don't, they're not allowed to. Mm-hmm. If, if I have a male and I just got him in and he's freshly altered or unaltered mm-hmm. and he goes to the fence to pee, okay, whatever, that's nature. Right. My dogs aren't allowed near the fence line. I don't allow it. It's just, it's fence fighting is my pet peeve. I hate it. Man. Fence fighting is my, and and the fact that my neighbors don't even, say a word so i just don't allow my dogs to engage in that behavior um i'm on my you know training for me and for you we've been doing it for so long it's not training anymore it's it's a lifestyle and it's Mm -hmm. a maintenance ritual and it just becomes part of the daily grind who goes in the door first who doesn't Mm -hmm. um and you know a lot of that too is because i see you with these dogs are kissing your face you got them on your shoulder you're laying on top of them I always say this, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I try to play guitar. You see guitar there? I suck at guitar. I, I suck. I'm you horrible. can't be good at everything, Robert. No, no, I know, but I suck at guitar, right? I love it. I mean, I, in my deepest soul, I want to be a rock star, but I can't. And I always think, like you said, we've been doing it for a long time. I really don't think it's about how long you've been doing it. Because I've been trying to play guitar since I was 16, way before I ever wanted to get to dogs. I think... What about I think, these prodigies that pick up a guitar and listen to music and right? play by ear? And that's what I'm saying. So I, I don't believe you really need to go to a school to learn to be a dog trainer. I mean, I, I, I never went to a school to be a dog trainer. I have a course online to t- teach it, but I don't believe you need it. I think if you're a natural dog trainer, I don't, I don't need a certificate. I need the initials behind my you name. You need on-hands training. You need on-hands training. And you might be... And that's what people hire based on. Right. I mean, your master's degree in, in a business might get you further. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when all other trainers are failed, they reach out to the Kyle Schwab's and the Robert yeah. Carl's. Yeah. I'm a last resort. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's so important, this whole picture of, are you a natural, right? Because you can learn to play guitar, and, you know, in 10 years, if I took lessons, I'd probably be a decent guitar player, but I'm not. Um, but as a, as a dog trainer, it's just, it just feels. It's, I go on a feeling, like those people who pick up the guitar and can just play anything, and they just get it. I also want to, I, I also am not musically inclined, and I always wanted to just play acoustic guitar. Yeah. You should buy one. I'm, I'm, it's therapy. I feel... I, that's the words not allowed anymore. Retar- I feel just so yeah. it's awkward <laughs> it's for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned something a minute ago. You said the dog on your shoulder. Uh-huh. I love putting dogs on my shoulder. I it know puts you do. them in an uncompromising position. It makes right. them uncomfortable. Their feet aren't on the ground. Mm-hmm. So they're super uncomfortable. So they look to you for comfort. Then when you bring them off your shoulder and you hold them here and they're against you, you know, pigs, they hate being held. That's mm-hmm. why they squeal. Or rabbits. The mm-hmm. second you put your arm under a pig or a rabbit's feet, that squealing goes away. Mm. So, you know, the most famous whisperer, we're not mentioning mm-hmm. him, says you can't put a dog on your shoulder. Dog can't sleep on your bed. Mm-hmm. Bullshit. Yeah. My, I dogs, agree. my dogs sleep on my bed. Oh, that's what I want to talk about. Right. So so we've got these like I'll tell people if, if they if, if if they can't sleep on your bed and they can't be on your shoulder, then how are you and I talk? I should be dead, essentially. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I don't I believe a dog, like in my house, you know, I mean, we had a little dachshund, and he'd walk on the table and give him whipped cream. I mean, you know, and, and my dogs all they, goofy's on top of me in the morning licking my face, you know, and I'm and I know you do that with your dogs. Um so I think we sometimes have rules for what we have to tell people to get them to get that position in the pack or within that dog. And there's things that we can do that other people probably shouldn't do. Do you agree with that? When, yeah. When Vegas, my 11 year old Frenchie doesn't let other dogs on the bed. I re- physically remove from the bed. I let the other dogs up and then he comes and he finds his spot and his spot is next to my pillow. Mm. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't rule my house. I rule my house. 
I, I think that's so important. I think that's another thing people completely overlook. Like, you know, they, I, I think a dog should enhance your life. And if a dog can't enhance my life, a dog, I don't want a dog in my life. And every one of my dogs enhances my life. You know, and I think if my dogs dog, are my friends. Yeah. They're, well, I think they're my, I, my relationship with you is the same as my relationship with my dogs. It's respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, they can, obviously can't cook and feed for me, but I get other things from them. Right. And I learn from them every day. You're the only person who's ever said that. I, I say the same thing. I, at one point, I wanted to write a book on lesson, life lessons I learned from my dog. <laughs> right? I mean, there's so much wisdom in the dog. And you know why? People always say, I, I did a podcast, episode 22, which was grieving the loss of your dog. And it was one, one after Silly died. It took me a while afterwards to do this. And it's one of my most popular podcasts because I really talk about how people say, well, you know, it's just a dog or get another dog or this and that and this and that. And the only answer, and it was a, a, there was a story, um, The Committed Wife, was a, it's, a, it's a Jewish book that you should read. It's beautiful. The Committed Wife? The Committed Wife, oh, yeah. Give, tell, them, tell my dad about it. It's, it's one of the most, my most fav- favorite books. And they talked about this woman whose father... Um, was a rabbi and the person said your father is the only person who helped me grieve the loss of my i don't know what it was child properly and she said what did he do and he said well everybody else came to me and said this is what god intended god wouldn't do it if you weren't strong enough and god this and god that and she said what did he do i'm gonna cry when i tell you the story she said your father held me in his arms and he cried with me and that is what so they could get it out yeah yeah because there's, I'm a big crier, by the way. I am too. I'm going to cry now, you know. But like, I cry. I cried during UFC interviews when the fighter <laughs> went. I, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I cried cry during the Notebook. <laughs> but um, <laughs> everybody did, right? But, but yeah. well, that's what makes us real and relatable. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't dress weird. We don't have stun guns and and, yeah. and tasers on our thighs. And right. We don't go out with snare poles, and we do what we yeah. do, and and we do it um, because we're strong willed. Um, what what draws you to the mollusers? Because because I I mean is, is there something you can define in that like why the I've mollusers? always I've, I've been the majority of my life was in the fitness industry. I ran Jane Fonda's gym. I opened up a, a gym in Beverly Hills, a cardiovascular gym called the Walking Center, which was where you walked on a treadmill during lunch. I worked for Precor. I worked for Life Fitness. I worked for Quality Gym, and then I ran a couple of fit, fitness stores. Uh, and my first dog was a boxer. I love the athleticism. Uh, my second dog was a boxer. My third dog was a dogo. Um, as an athlete and 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 for cardio and hiking, I wanted that kind of dog. From there, like we talked about before, sparked my natural ability of the guy, the go-to guy at the dog park. Mm-hmm. With I was 19 years old, wow. and I was training people's dogs. No charge. Yeah. No, no business card. <laughs> right. It was just like go see this guy. He's got a furniture store. It's right on the bend of the thing. People would walk in. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm looking for a dog training facility. This is it. That's funny. And I take him to the kennels in the back. Um, what draws me to the molossers are it's not an ego thing because I don't take my dog. I know out. you don't. You have no ego. Um, yeah. I went to uh But do you like their look? Do I went out like yesterday to get an uh, acai bowl and I took a five month old Frenchie. I don't need to take my courses out. I don't right. need to prove anything to anybody. Um why do I like them? Well, I don't like the yeast and the Cheetos and the Frito smell that comes out of their face. I like the uh, I like the challenge. I mm-hmm. like I like when people tell me I can't do something. I've always been that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I can't achieve, when I had my furniture stores and you can't do this, I did it. Um, and I like dogs that people tell me that are unfixable, and I fix them. I don't throw it in their face. I just fix them. Mm-hmm. I put them in a home, and then I send the the previous home a, a picture of the dog in the home. Um, it's a challenge. It's rewarding for me, and it's it's fulfilling. Um, I make a living doing something that I love. Mm-hmm. You can't ask for anything more than that. It's not a job, right? I always say I don't really have a job. I never it's had a, job. a real job. Unfortunately, my life is based on advocacy, and it's not for me. It's not a money thing. So I I, I need to manage my finances better and charge for what it's worth. But most of these dogs are relinquished to me, so the money's just not there. But the people who are super dedicated mm-hmm. and want to put it out. Um, will yeah i'm not a lot of money it's five thousand for or dog aggression and it's ten thousand for human aggression mm-hmm. and there's no time frame on that that's a set fee if you want to give your dog to me for sanctuary for life because it's simply too dangerous and you don't want to euthanize it, it's 30k mm-hmm. and i think it's more than fair yeah but i have to supplement my income by making furniture oh you, st- you st- so you still make furniture now yeah i just retooled and, and upgraded all my tools everything went I, some of the technology has changed so mm-hmm. i had to get rid of my industrial stuff because i'm not going to do tile or electrical or mm-hmm. plumbing anymore and i went straight 
back to finish carpentry. I got rid of all my 18 volt. I upgraded to 20 volt and I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm just working on a video portfolio right now. Wow. Um, with that, I can really help my behavioral dogs. Uh, I mean, my medical dogs. Right. Because I specialize in medical <clears throat> and behavioral mm -hmm. mastiff. Most every mastiff is medical. I would think so, right? The yeast. Disaster. The entropion. Yeah. The, the overbreeding. Um, the inbreeding. Yeah. The line breeding. I'm mm -hmm. sick of it all. I agree with you. I think that's well, mostly I'm sick of the people. I, the dogs. I never get upset with the dogs. Um, and I don't train dogs, by the way. I train people. Yeah. I, I, I very little. I do very little with the dogs. I, I'm like you because I give them the tools. I do lots of free follow ups. I do a lot of zooms, a lot of facetimes. Mm -hmm. I'm there for life, especially with the dogs I adopt out. People, like, Kyle, I don't want to bug you. I know it's like you're not bugging me. Yeah. I want. I want the stick to itiveness is what's important to me. I yeah. want the dog to stay in the home. You can call me. I'm there for my adopters when they euthanize their dogs. When I'm not, when I'm available and I'm not busy, I'll go to the vet with them. Mm. And a lot of these people have become friends family yeah. yeah so august 1st will be 31 years i have i think i have about eight or nine homes now with their fourth dog it's wow. like their fourth generation dog from smash face wow so do you think you'll keep going or do you think you want like i'm i'm i, I just want to retire i mean i've done yeah. so much I'm oh, just, I'm burned. financially i can't and as long as i'm able-bodied i don't think uh with the the anxiety that i suffer from i could ever stop working right i'm gonna work till the day i die I, I want to work till the day I die, but I want to kind of. Just, but you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're, I'm you're back down. Yeah, and I want to like I'm going to get a puppy. But you're working somewhere. smart. I well, work I hard, and you work smart. Wow. Well, so when we're off camera, you need to tell me how that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we both have a passion, you know. I mean, yeah. well, you know, I mean, I taught karate, and I, you know, everything I've done in my life was because I just loved it, and then money started to come, and I think that's why I didn't want to be a dog trainer because I didn't want to have another career that would be screwed up by money. And it always screws it up, right? It always screws up. Because how many times, you know, have you trained somebody's dog for free? You just say, okay, you know, let me just help you out. You know, I'll just do it. Okay, whatever. But, you know, what I want to talk about too is that frustration that you've got to feel. Because you and I have, I mean, I run depressed. And I've, I've always, I talk about my emotions, my feelings. I've got no f fear. I, I haven't lost any clients because of it. No, but, but how Mine's do you, you, how do you, you run low and I run high. Yeah, I, yeah. I have the anxiety, you have the low. Yeah. But my, th my thing is this frustration with people. Like this letdown with people. I'm, I always feel, I, what, I start, what I started to say Have is Have you that, become cynical? Well, I, I'm very cynical. But you know, I, I always tell people, I say, do, do you get disappointed people? I said, not anymore. Because everybody starts at a zero. So they can't go any lower, right? So everywhere they go, I, it's like a step where it's I appreciate It's sad. You've them. lowered your expectations I've had to. I've had to. You know, because I, I have to. Feel, you know, it's the worst thing because you feel, like I see people get dogs and I think, why would you get that dog or why won't you correct that dog or why won't you give that dog structure or why won't you do this or that and i hate the i hate the what's and the why's you know the what's and the why's is what kills me because dogs don't live in what's and why's they live in do's and i think that's so important but how do you you know with one that? thing we haven't made the, the whole, dangerous dogs is a negative subject we haven't mentioned our amazing clients that pay and follow our instructions and live a, a happy life Let's and they're we haven't because Everything, everything, politics, everything skews towards the negative. Everything. But I have clients that literally hang on every word. Yeah. And and <clears throat> and 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 I've successfully look. There was a there was a there was a there was a blue Connie Corso named Buffy living in uh, Baldwin Park. The next door neighbor had a black pit bull. The next door neighbor was at work. The black I'm sorry, both families were at work. The black pit bull jumped the fence into the yard of the female corso. The female corso dismembered and killed the black pit. The Corsa was uh, not confiscated. What's it called when they take impounded? Impounded. Thank uh -huh. you. Impounded to the thing. The, the dog was rescue only. They wouldn't even let the owner take it out because it involved a death. But it wasn't the owner's fault. The dog jumped into her yard. But yeah. this is these are molossers. Yeah. So people think they got a badass pit bull. You haven't dealt with a Corsa. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You're dealing with a whole other animal. Um, so um, I pulled the dog because mm -hmm. I have access to rescue only dogs. And I put that home in a dog with another dog. And I put it in a home with a guy with one leg. He was a Iraqi uh, veteran from uh, De Desert Storm. Wow. And uh, so far, I don't know if she's still alive, but last I talked to him, no bite history, no fights. I didn't put him with another molosser. I put it, he had a black lab. But what, what, was your, what was your thinking on that? My thinking was uh, the dog <clears throat> hopped a yard. There was nobody to intervene. It was her yard. And mm -hmm. he possibly, because he was a male, may have attacked her or maybe tried to mount her. Mm. And at the end of the day... Or so pit bull. No. No. Yeah. I mean, it's, oh, do you find it interesting? Like one of the fascinating things to me is 
I think that throughout the world, like I, my mom, I think of strong women. I mean, I think women really rule the world. I mean, in so many ways. They rule they, us. They rule us, right? I mean, you and I, I'm stronger than my wife, but she completely rules well, us, right? But <laughs> that means nothing. But um, in the dog thing, I always love when I did play groups to start out with a strong female. Like, I love strong oh female my God, dogs, right? We were cut from the same cloth. Right, nothing better than a strong female. Like no male is no. going to go near a strong female. Okay, so let's talk about neutered, that. unneutered, never bigger breed, Kangle. Yeah. I don't give a shit. No, Maya, my dog that was confiscated for the from the bodybuilder that was shot with steroids. Mm -hmm. God rest her soul. Uh, uh. And and there's a video of me on YouTube, and I said every pack should have a dominant female. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened when she was in that yard. Yeah, male dogs respect female Females. dogs. When you get two males. It's always a problem. It's a war. Yeah. And two females is a disaster. That's a too, war right? too. Two females. <laughs> That's a war too. But yeah. you know what? I'm very heavily laden in females right now and everybody's good. We're all good. Really? Yeah. I allow That's for rough play. I know people don't like that, but I do. They're molossers. Yeah. Yep. I allow for it. I do timeouts and I'll, 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 I'll step in. If I don't, I allow dogs to put other dogs on their back. But when sure. a, a third dog comes, mm -hmm. then they're picking. That's when yeah. the other dog feels insecure. Yep. There's this and that. And this whole thing of dogs can't be in your bed and dogs can't be on your shoulder. Yep. Just stop with the silliness Nonsense. already. Yeah. These are for dogs that have, um, that have um, resource guarding sure. issues where you can't get on the bed. If you can't get on your bed, then take your arm, swipe the dog off the bed, right. send him flying, get on your bed, and then bring him up on. and reward him. Yeah. That's what that's for. Yeah. The, the, putting your dog on the shoulder dog on the bed just stop right it doesn't have anything to do with anything yeah. no i mean i again i talk about it all the time like i think you start that puppy out right if you can and i always talk about the same thing if you can get a dog if you're new get a dog that's two years old because you're going to know that dog and whoever has that dog a rescue or a breeder and if it's the rescue they're going <clears> to <throat> they're going to be honest yeah and they're going to in their hopefully, bio hopefully the, <laughs> most, of ones, are, yeah. most of them are most of them are in the bio <clears throat> they're going to divulge yeah. i know for me i divulge all bite histories to yeah. people i have a yorkie right now with bite history bite history how about a how about a life of biting <laughs> i don't know if the scab is still there but uh. she's a little shit but she's a good dog uh -huh. she's a good dog she never misses the wee wee pad she uh. she ankle bites my mastiffs she's a good dog the way i'm going to adopt her out i'm going to do about three or four meet and greets so that the fourth fifth time they come over she's excited to see mm. them and she knows them and then when it comes time to do the adoption, I'm going to deliver her to the house. Mm. I don't want her driving in the car. I'm right. just going to do a slow roll with this one. Nine months old, but wow, is she off her rocker. Really? Yeah. But she's a Yorkie. She's not dangerous. Yeah, but it's a terrier. It is a terrier at the end of the day. I always say it's the it terrier, terrier that makes... I think that that's... You know, you know, you're, you know a lot about pit bulls. And I, I get into these discussions, arguments all the time with people online. Like there was one guy arguing with me. He was like, you know, this guy was bred the best pit bull fighting <laughs> dog. I mean, I think if you fight dogs, you're... You know, you there's a, hell isn't hot enough. Small penis. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I said that too. I said, I said, you know, hell's not hot enough for those people. But I think... Where do you think that came from? I think a lot of it has to do with the terrier, that tenacious, crazy drive of the terrier that's really that that messes up the pit bulls, because we know there's the 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 the, the molosser in there with the terrier, and I think it's that mix that makes yeah. them so messed have up. Have you have you noticed in the last? I don't know how to put a time frame. Have you noticed in the last eight to ten years in the media how pit bull bites, maulings, and deaths have almost gone to zero? no yeah really yeah they're just not the, they don't have the popularity anymore and, and these guys that breed on craigslist that are asking 18 they end up these dogs get 12 13 14 weeks old they want them out of their house they're dropping down to 350 bucks oh i didn't they're even not, know this they're not the it dog anymore hmm. i haven't seen a pit bull bite on the news in years well there was the two of the ones in florida the, 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 what happened they killed, i didn't, I didn't. It killed the kid it killed this why was the kid two kids. why was the kid with two pit bulls well, so okay so let's get into that is it right? the dog or the people Right. Well, this this podcast is about the people. Yeah. No, the I agree ignorance. With you. Yeah. The irresponsibility and buying dogs, buying or adopting dogs that are beyond your physical means. Well, so Why was, was the sixteen year old girl in Thousand Oaks with unaltered corsos? Six corsos. Six. Right. Who does that? You know how she survived, right? No. The the ambulance. There was an ambulance and a fire truck leaving another whatever heart attack stroke, whatever okay. driving by. They got out with their equipment in the middle of it. So between. Bat batons, axes, uh, fire extinguishers, and hoses. They were right. to get off. No 16 year old girl can survive the death, uh, the, an Never. attack of one course. So this was six, and they were able to get to her on time. I haven't done any follow up. I don't know what kind of condition she's yeah. in. Um, I only saw it the first day it happened, but I saw the dogs being uh, 
snare pulled into the animal control trucks. Yeah. These dogs were beasts. Beasts. Yeah. You know, you can, you know, you can put, a, I'm looking at your photo that you took when you went to Africa. You know, you can put this dog out in the, out in the Serengeti or whatever, and uh, they can handle themselves. No Is doubt. A, a Corso? No doubt. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I follow these two websites about uh, Corso's ability against wild animals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the bite force of a, of a wild animal is enough to, was designed by nature, God, Darwin, whatever you want to mm -hmm. believe in, to make the kill and that's it. Okay. But the bite force of a molosser and a, and a genetically modified dog is 10 times that of a wild animal. The strongest bite force in the world, by the way, is a hyena. Right, that is. But they don't have the tenacity of a corso or a neo. They don't have the stamina mm. and they don't have the skin to protect themselves. Wow. You'd be hard pressed. You, you know, a neo could go up against any of these dogs. Wow. I mean, the new one I took out of Kern County, my God, the wrinkles, you're, there's no bite that's going to hurt him. Wow. There's nothing, there's nothing to grab onto except skin. Yeah, and the tenacity. The tenacity yeah. is, is just crazy. Well, we were talking about that when you said that, like who puts, like this, the, when I did the podcast on, and I've done two recently, um, and I put, a, the last one I did, I put a picture of a Malinois on one side, and I put a picture of a kind of course on the other side. And I said, family pets are a recipe for disaster. I watched it. Right? Because I don't care. I don't, I mean, I'm going to call out Malinois more because I, I mean, I've worked with more pits and, and, and mollusks because of the shelter, but I, I'm much more familiar with the, with the Malinois. But it's a horrible pet. You know, unless you're going to be like you and me, manage that dog. And I mean, manage that dog constantly. It's just, it's not a safe dog to have around kids. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's a, a maintenance lifestyle. ritual. There's going to be people that re, that watch your podcast and they're going to, they're going to go on and comment. Is there a comment section? Oh yeah. They're going to comment and say, oh, I have a course. So it, they like, always it's like do. A, but, but, <laughs> yeah. but we're, we have to, we're not here for the 1%. No. We're here to educate the I lay person yeah. who's thinking about getting one. Yeah. Um, Corso's not a first time Mastiff. I did a Mastiff stability tree. I made it. I drew a tree okay. and I posted it on my page. And of course, you you have all your mal people. I got all my molasser people. Mm -hmm. so I did the Mastiff stability tree at the very very top. I put the the dog to Bordeaux. Okay. Next in line, I put the English. After that, I put the bull Mastiff. I put the Corso last. Huh. I'll put a Pressa before I put a Corso. A Pressa. Yeah. I'll, I'll adopt a dog de Bordeaux to a first time dog owner. Wow. I've never seen a dog de Bordeaux. I've never, I've never taken a dog de Bordeaux in for training. Huh. I've owned several. I've never taken one in for training. So what do you think separates these behaviors into these different molecules? I don't know the science behind okay, it. Yeah, right. I have no idea. I, I, I wasn't around in Italy and ancient Roman Greece when these dogs were developed. But the mall, but the the kind of corso was kind of killed off and then kind of came back, right in the seventies. Yeah. So it wasn't killed off, but it died it, off. Yeah. Okay. Uh, due to popularity, and then and then you know there's always a straggling dog that can be get bred. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. These dogs are. How can I even say this and be? I, I hate them, but I love them. Mm -hmm. I get it. They're my favorite. I'll have I'll have corsos till the day I die. I've had this rescue for thirty one years. Corsos came into my life about thirty about. I think the first course who came to me about uh, 17 years ago, 16 wow. years ago. So maybe about half of the time I've had my, or just unheard of. Yeah. Now I wake up in the morning. The first thing I do, like everybody else is we check our phone, we pee <laughs> right. and we check right. our phone. Right. And what I do is I go to my messenger on Facebook mm -hmm. and I have my messenger. And then I have the messenger for my smash face page. Uh -huh. And then I have to pick and choose between the 12 to 14 emails I got last night of which course I'm going to take in. <laughs> wow. And then, and then I go to my email. And then, of course, there's text messages because my number is, uh, as a public figure, my number is uh -huh. on Google. Yeah. And then I have to pick and choose. And I can only, I'm one person. Yeah. I can do one to three at a time. Um, my goal, you said, how am I going to do this for? Yeah. I'm looking for a sanctuary. Okay. I want to give sanctuary to Corsos. Uh-huh. So you, wa you want to build a sanctuary yeah. that you can own and run and you can take Corsos in. Yeah. I'm going to, I'd like to do all my behavioral there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'd like to do, uh, my medical there and end of life, uh, hospice there. But what I want to do is I want to, uh, be able to do a higher volume because, um, this trend is just getting started. I mean, the shelters are when I was up at Kern County pulling out the Neo, she says, can you come tell, we've got this black dog in, looks very similar to the dog you're pulling. Can you just tell us a little bit about one of their beautiful black crop deered corso, mm -hmm. thick, nice male let me put my hand right into the kennel Un unheard of super nice dog i don't know if i'm gonna go back for him because i'm full but um 
It's crazy. Unless and the fear bite fight. is the worst bite. There's no worst bite. The fear There's bite. nothing worse. I was picking up a dog in my yard about 10 years ago in the corner. It was a Corso mixed with a Sharpay. One, one was <laughs> same litter, backyard bread. One was per- perfect. The other one, it was dark. And I should have just put a slip lead, but it was dark. I wanted to go to bed. I was in my boxer shorts. Wow. Did it lay it down? I mean, it laid it because the fear bite, it's yeah. like, it's like a baby rattlesnake. They For don't, sure. there's no discernment. It's, it's, it's full force. <laughs> right. Boom. And right there. And uh, wow. But you know, I picked him up, got him in and the dog's in a home and it, they love him. But, um, it's crazy for me. Um, the most dangerous dog in the world for me is, is, is a bull terrier, British bull terrier. Um, the, the hook nose ones, yeah, right? The, the Spuds McKenzie's. Spuds McKenzie's. Yeah. They're yeah. just a gnarly. Their nose not working chainsaw with four legs yeah, they're gnarly. and then uh <laughs> i'm gonna get a lot of hate on this one and i know there's a lot of good ones out there roddies yeah roddies can be gnarly boy they have an inversion of strangers very similar to the corso corso definitely the most dangerous and then as far as dogs go i love the breed um i'll have another one but as far as dog aggression there's no dog that can even touch it an argentinian dogo Dogo Argentina. Yeah. Forget about it. The ability. It's crazy. The athleticism mixed mm-hmm. with the tenacity and the musculature. Have you seen the size of the dogos coming in from Europe now? Insane. We're at one like we're, we're at 140 pounds. They would never were that big, right? I mean they're no, usually under this is 100 not, pounds. No, no because the Americans got a hold of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's bigger is cra- better. It's crazy. <laughs> It's insane. Um, I, I wanted to, we, we were talking about positive reinforcement versus negative enforcement. Yeah. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that negative enforcement doesn't imply pain, hitting, yelling, or screaming. A negative enforcement can just you, you and I standing on ground. Yeah. Spatial pressure. You know, and if, um, you know, if we're during this podcast, if Goofy gets off and he's all trying to kiss me in the face yeah. right now and you just, hey, 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 off, hey knock that's, it off. that's yeah. a negative reinforcement. For sure. That's a negative enforcement. Well, people, you know, so the one thing I always did when I was teaching in my courses, and if anybody watches my stuff, I never use the word punish the dog. I hate the word. And science uses the a word A dog wouldn't even punishment. know what a punishment would mean. A dog well, doesn't. I always say that there's correct, I always correct dogs. I correct dogs. I'm a micromanager with my dogs. I micromanage every single thing they do. I don't like the way you're laying. I don't like the way you're sitting. I don't like what you're doing. Because I want you to be perfect, right? That's just how I feel from my martial arts background. That's why I was able to walk in your house and nothing happened. No, nothing's going to happen, right? If you if you walk in with me, they'll, Maya will bark, but that's then that's it. You pet them and you're done. But my issue is with... Um, <laughs> is the word pun- the word punishment? Because if you look at punishment in the dictionary, it means punitive, mm-hmm. in in re- retaliation. Now, if you're going to retaliate, if my dog poops on the rug and I take and I come in t- twenty minutes an hour later and I rub her face in it, <clears throat> it's taught her nothing. It's taught her that I'm a jerk. Well, and it's going to send them back because they have no idea what you're doing. Right. So they're just time, standing around waiting for you to say yeah. hi, and all of a sudden the nose is in. And next time they're going to just do it behind the curtain, so I'm not going to see it for two weeks, right? So I have stripped the word punishment out of all vocabulary. I use corrections. And I don't care if it's positive punishment, negative punishment, da 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 I hate the word punishment. I love the word corrections. Because if I allow you to make mistakes, and I allow my dog to make a mistake, and I don't go, hey, hey, knock it off, then, and you know, I can let him keep doing it and go, oh, let's try again, hmm, let's try again, let's try again. That's so cruel, right? So why would I, that's true punishment, right? That's mental punishment, it's mental abuse, but I'm going to let you fail and fail and fail until you get it. Why am I, why don't I just help you? Why don't I just show you what you should be doing? So how how, how annoyed on that vein in, in that vein how annoyed are you when you're watching other training videos from other trainers and stuff like that and they're going to put a dog in a sit and the dog won't sit and they just continually say sit what are you mm. doing you're teaching your dog not to sit you're teaching um, your dog has no value i'm a huge believer in physically manipulating my dog into the position i wanted in so sure. i've got this new neo he's really good at sit but i had to drop some ear meds and some eye meds in this morning he just didn't want to sit the ear meds the eye meds have steroids in it so it just mm-hmm. burns for a second he didn't want to sit so he has wrinkles I just took his wrinkle and then simultaneously with the physical manipulation sit and I mm-hmm. put him in the sit and he stayed and he let me do both ears and both eyes. But to tell him more than once, more than twice. And then when I go to out him at God forbid, he postures one of my other dogs. Well, yeah, it means nothing. So it reminds me of the kid in the candy store in Walmart and the kids behind you tugging on the mother and you know, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. And then she finally gives in. Perfect. You can't give in. Yeah. No, you, can't, well, you never give in. I mean, that's the one thing people don't understand. So what, what, uh, what, you can't do it in a sentence, in a, in a, in a paragraph. What, uh, what advice would you give for someone, not a first time dog owner, just any dog owner interested in a Mal or a Corso, how would you dissuade them? And then who do you think is qualified and what would, in your eyes, what would qualify them? I think 
I mean, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think it takes, like a lot of people I meet who are military people, law enforcement people who have that, um, that discipline, martial artists, fighters, you know, I think, um, not thugs, but real fighters, you know, um, you understand that discipline, you understand as a fighter that you can't let that guy throw that punch at you without blocking it just once. You know, you can't, you don't want to take that one hit because that one hit's going to get you killed. Um, letting those dogs get away with stuff. Now, I've changed my theory a lot in puppies. Like if you, if you want to take a puppy for a protection dog sport, I think you should let them be naughty as puppies because it builds that confidence. Um, but you still should micromanage the dog, you know, not neurotically, but um, we have a friend, Janet and I, who has a dog who, um, I'm not going to say the breed or anything, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get out or if it's a man or a woman, but this dog has bitten everybody. It bites people in the household. Like that would never we happen. We talked about this when I got Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. It would never happen in my household. Because the minute I tell my dog, like when With, Goofy If it's young, the breed we're talking about, that's amazing that bites haven't ended in death. Yeah, but the, 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 you know, here's the thing. If you can't, Goofy learned come, right? He learned his recall. And then one day at my house, I had a buddy of mine over and I said, Goofy, come. And he didn't. And I went into the other room and I dragged him across the room. And I said, here, here, very strong. And he was going, ah, because if I say something, that's it. I would only say it one time. Because if you're launching to bite somebody, and, you know, I used to carry like at one time at the, at the, at the protection and the club where I trained, I had um, a rabbit that was torn apart and it was like, I mean, it would died in my arms, but I held it in my hand and he did a perfectly focused heel with that rabbit. We had a, a rooster that landed on the field one day. We were healing him around. The, the Does he have drive towards small animals? <sighs> yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's a mammal. He's, he's yeah. crazy about it. Like if he sees a bird, he's going to go flying at it. If there's a bird on that grass there, he'll go after it. It's amazing. If I, I say stop, he'll stop. My, my, my fence line in my yard is wood. Uh, you know, the old dog ear. Oh, yeah, dog ear pickets. Yeah. yeah, picket. It's amazing. So I have a lot of foliage in my backyard. It's unbelievable to see these neos and... And these the athleticism when they see a squirrel, it's really you see these dogs, you think they're lethargic, you know. But no, you would, yeah. No, you don't know what's under those wrinkles. You have Crazy. no idea. Well, Dwayne can see a bird in the yard. He doesn't care at all. If it's a dead duck and he's going to go get it, he's going to get get it for retrieving, you know. But it's crazy. You see those differences. They see squirrels are insane. Dwayne sees squirrels. Like, I don't care. I have a course on named Faith that uh, you know, she's staying with me forever. I'm giving her sanctuary. She. Um, she hops six foot fences without touching them. A corso? At 140, yeah. So I'm working on my, so my yard is segregated in half. I have my classic cars on one side and the dogs on the other. I don't want them <laughs> scratching on my car. Right. So I'm underneath my Jeepster the other day. And all of a sudden I just hear a thump. And I look up and she, she come over to say hi to me. I was on the creeper on my back with grease on my face. She's licking me in the face. And I just look up and I'm like, how? Yeah. How? And That's how could insane. I ever place her? Yeah, because L- LA City, LA County. Six foot is the ordinance. The only higher fences are people that live in the hills that have a retaining wall in the right. back, but they're but the sides of their house are still going to be at sure. six feet. So she's not going anywhere. Wow, that's great. What what advice do you give people who want to get a corso? I try and dissuade them as much as possible, and if they fight for the dog, then do we do a trial. But I take there's so many things I take into consideration. I are they male or female? What size are they? Do they have a fighting background? Mm-hmm. Do they understand anything about martial arts? And if they were to be attacked, I used to teach self-defense for dogs. I used to have these classes. The classes dwindled down to they were so small. I was doing one-on-one and then it just kind of went away. Nobody wants to pay. Does the average person know if they're on the street, what happens if a dog grabs them in the arm? No. There's only a couple of things you can do. Um, but um, I try and dissuade them. First of all, first of all, my corsos don't go to anybody who hasn't owned one before. Mm-hmm. But if they've had a Roddy or a Borble, whatever, I'll consider it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's always a tough thing. You know, you, you can't have one unless you've had one. And when do you get your first one, right? I, le- le- I, let I somebody else go to a bridge. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I want to keep my, I want to keep my. Your reputation. Yeah. My record. Yeah. Well, you have a great My record. reputation is shot. Forget about it. <laughs> but, but. I want to keep my record. I want uh-huh. to keep my record clean. Yeah. And uh, I do that in, you know, by putting people through the ringer. My. It's weird as an animal behavior as you know, running a rescue too, but my bios are so long when people get them. Mm-hmm. They're like, wow, you really took a lot of time. But a lot of it is boilerplate cut and paste from another course. Got it. And then I just tweak it t- t- pertinent to that specific dog. Right. But everything is in there. Really? I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like a, it's a contract, man. And if you read it and you're still interested, oh, you're all right. you know, yeah. I, I just, I got my, by the way, I just got after 30, I just got my first 
turnkey Corso in, the one that was tied to the oh, bumper yeah. of the Escalade. In Malibu, right? And I had this kid. He's amazing. He's adopted two pits from me. And uh, one died, Ginger, and his other one, uh, Bonnie, is still alive. And he's been begging me for a Corso for about 10 years. But the kid is uh, about 5'7", 125 pounds. Wow. And I get this turnkey Corso in. I never put him on Fet Finder, Adopt Better Rescue Me. I just called him and said, you need to come oh, over. That's awesome. So he's really happy. That's so, awesome. You know, on a good note, they're they're out there. The, the yeah. good dogs are out there. We're, but for the purposes of this podcast, I know we were trying to portray them for what they are to keep people safe. And then hopefully, you know, we're not, you know, we're not Robert. We don't, we don't have millions and upon millions of followers where people are going to reach out. But if we can touch. Well, I mean, I do have a lot of followers and I do think people will see it. And I mean, I think. And then know, send it to people and then. Yeah, share it. I mean, I think that, you know, we have to understand that dogs can be dangerous. Pit bulls can be dangerous. Sharp pace can be dangerous. Malinois can be dangerous. And every time you're going to hear somebody say, oh, you know, my pit bulls are never dangerous. You know, I've, I've got six pit bulls and they never bit anybody. But that's not what we're talking about, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm not well, talking. Well, more than dangerous, we're talking about deadly now. Very deadly. I don't want to do it on the podcast because it would take time. But, God, my God, if you and I just Googled right now, death by dog. I, said, I, mean, I think we should talk about that next time. You know, I'd, I would really like to have you. Well, come we don't back want to. On. We don't want to scare people. Well, but I do. I mean, I think people should be educated. And people should know that you know that a dog. It's a wild animal. You're bringing a wild animal into your house, and if you have a kid there or a small animal there or you know an elderly person, that that person is potentially at why risk. Why do Why do people think just because they're domesticated? I hate that word, domesticated, that they they won't revert back to the what nature intended? They're carnivores. I mean, tell you something, if Goofy got out and you couldn't find him in, in a week when he's hungry, he's going to catch something. He'd be fine. A yeah. quail, a squirrel, he's going to sneak up Doesn't on something. Matter, yeah. He's going to revert right back to where nature intended, even though he's been hand-fed his whole life. Yeah, At I the agree. end of the day, he's a dog, and people don't understand how primal they are. By the way, I don't do toys at my house. Do you see any toys here? Don't do toys. I, I, okay, another thing you, I talk about. You have one that. dog? You have two dogs? You yeah. can do toys. Yeah. You want to do tug-of-war? You win. You yeah. take it. But other than that, there's yeah. no toys. Uh, my dog's I, toys yeah is you. me yeah and the other dogs yeah well my dog's toys is my dog's to toy only comes out when we're going to train there's tug yeah. toys so we'll train but ball, that's for a purpose for a purpose yeah there's no toys like there's no you no know. you want to go out to dinner with your girl and you want to be come home and just know that so yeah. and so's on the sofa this one's on my bed and i know where everybody is yeah. you know in my in my old place before jan and i got married i had cameras I could, I knew exactly where every dog, where Goofy and I would be at what time and what they would be doing because it's, it's easy to know. It's not, it's yeah. not hard to figure out. Dude. I've just, I'm at it. So I'm just strategically set my house up and I'm at peace when I leave. And yeah. I know, and I know I'm coming home to peace. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, look, I'm going to let you go back to your home in peace. Um, do me a favor. Come back. For sure. I guarantee you people are going to be looking for more of this. You've, I'm going to link your YouTube channel, which you have. There's nothing on there. No? You know, what can we link? Where can people find you? If they have an aggressive dog, they should Google Smash Face Rescue and look yeah. me up. I won't. I but wanna... just to learn more about you, let's say they don't. Let, I would. Oh, like there's to... lots of literature on me online. Okay. There's, there's lots of articles. In 2008, I was voted the best pit bull trainer in Los Angeles. In 2009, I was written up in um, New York Times Magazine as the nation's leading aggression specialist. From uh, like uh, in 2008 and nine, I had a show on Discovery Channel called Big Dog, chronologizing my life's work with dogs. Wow, my, okay. my name is out there, but um, I'm controversial like you, and yeah. uh, people either love us or hate us, but we're here to help. And I think at the end of the day, we should just mention one thing, is that this this podcast is a positive podcast, even sure. though it was on a negative subject. Oh, I think it's very I think everything I do is positive. I mean, everything has to be, because giving people answers they need or information they need, because without that information, then it is negative. Information is key. It's like not correcting a dog. It's negative. That, I find that the most negative thing ever. Yeah. So, but come back. Um, I know people are going to try to find you. I think people should research you because I think, um, in my opinion, I think you're the foremost authority on you know these these smash face dogs. You know these these dogs that these without sounding dogs. pompous, I feel like I am. And when when you, you feel that way about yourself, you you succeed and excel. And it's not just me as a dog trainer; it's as an actor, a model, mm -hmm. whatever you do. I agree. You, you got to feel you're the best. But there's people out there that feel they are that aren't. I agree. No, there's <laughs> but, a lot but, of them. but you and I aren't trash talk. You know what I love about this podcast is mm -hmm. two trainers who we, we're polar opposite. Yeah. Your shit's on my roots yeah. are in rescue. Yeah. I'm a losser. You're yeah. you're a wolf pack. Yeah. It's so different. But we can sit here and it's it's amazing how opposite, but yet how we share so many of the same values. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think good trainers, I mean, I have so many friends who are good trainers. So do I. And 
I respect them. I love talking with them. The ones I can't stand are people who are going to get on talk crap on, on the There's online. no need. There's no need. I mean, there's, Robert, there's, how, honestly, how many homes have you been in where they've been through two or three trainers and you fix the dog in a session everyone, too? Yeah. <laughs> I've never, I always tell people, don't let me be the first person you call. Just if nobody else can figure it out. Because there's, there's, look, there's so much business. There's, there's an abundance of there's business. There's plenty, yeah. Right? I mean, like, I, I don't even, I refer everything out. I don't take any clients at all. So um, I think people, you know, trainers should get together. I think, you know, balanced training, the idea of really being able to work with dogs, use your tools, use your knowledge, use corrections, use that approach. Everything I do with a dog starts with a toy and a treat. Where it goes from there, that's up to the dog. Well, I'm being able to reach out to you the other day uh, oh, you're the on re the recall. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just not what I do. Right. But I can't get the client's dog back. Mm -hmm. But you're talking Without. about something I just don't practice. Right. So the dog is balanced, the dog is stable, and the dog is social, and I fix the separation anxiety. But, Amazing. But the recall's not there, so I'm using all the techniques that we talked about. Yeah, working? Um, well, she's super ADD. Yeah. So she's a puppy. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's not, it's not easy. I mean, usually, you know, recall, there's a, a friend of mine who's a trainer who said that the, the, when you teach a dog the retrieve, a Labrador, for example, it's a natural behavior for the dog to retrieve the item. It's not a natural behavior for the dog to hand it over to yeah, you, yeah, yeah. right? And the same thing. It's a natural behavior for a dog to come back to you, but it's not a natural behavior for that dog to stay or do it when you want him to. Right. And so you have to always condition the behavior in with the, you know, with the, with the other stuff. My so, favorite dogs, and I know you've had dogs, are the ones that when you're at the dog beach road that come and check in on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't check on them. They come and check yeah. on you and then go off and, and do their thing. And then leave again. Yeah. And then they look for you. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love yeah. that connection. Yeah, it's a great connection. So we, we all share a common love and respect for that animal you know that, that there's there's cattiness there. between rescue groups but there's mm -hmm. not a lot of cattiness between trainers i find a lot do you see it yeah i see a lot i mean i see i mean mainly because of my social media presence i see so much crap like people oh you know like i've got this one a couple i'm not gonna say the names because it doesn't give attention but they'll start to go oh you know you're a horrible like i've got this akita that i was training and i had to i was kind of firm on him because he's a big powerful dog and i gave him a couple of questions and this woman says well robert doesn't know what he's doing with the dog you know he's just making the dog more aggressive well this dog wouldn't hurt any dog but when he started out i started when he was really young but as an akita we know that's going to come in at some point that aggression is going to show its ugly face and it's either going to be people aggression or dog aggression or both and he started showing it and we had to work him through it in the series that i put up i kind of journaled this but now the dog's two years old the dog you know he has it on an e-call he walks it a buddy of mine joey owns it no issues but these people are so catty because they see your position, like, you know, the, the notoriety you've gotten, the notoriety I've gotten. And then they think that the way to get attention, maybe they took some social media course or something online, is to find somebody who's really good and tear them down. I've had people make videos about me. Um, Eminem yeah. said, you know, Eminem, yeah. rapper, Eminem said, uh, you've got enemies, dot, dot, dot. It means you're doing something right. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. He's a, you know, the guy's a philosopher. Yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, you, you're not going to have enemies if you're not doing something, if you're not getting people's attention. Totally. You know, so come back. Let's do another one.